Today in the news, we got a leaked review of what could be AMD's budget gaming king, a Pi that got an upgrade, and a foldable surface. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. It looks like their mid to low end CPU, the Ryzen 5 3600, got in the hands of El Chapuza's Informatico and got a full review before release. Now, while this information seems quite legit, I would still recommend you take a trip to Spain to visit the salt mines. So what we have here is a Ryzen 5 3600 tested on an X470 gigabyte Aorus board that has one of the newer BIOSes for compatibility. The memory is some G-Scale Flare X at 3200 megahertz and the GPU is the almighty RTX 2080 Ti. The cooler used on the CPU is actually the Wraith Stealth which is provided by AMD when you buy that CPU. The comparisons used here are the 2700X for AMD. As for Intel they tested multiple CPUs including the 9900K all with the current mitigations in place. Now let's jump into those benchmarks. It was tested in both Cinebench R15 and 20 but we'll just look at R20 since it's newer. As expected, in single core performance, the 3600 beats the old 2700X thanks to the 15% IPC uplift, but it loses to the 9900K since clock speeds is the name of the game here for Intel. It does get quite uncomfortably close to the 9900K though, and that is pretty impressive. In multi-core, no surprises there, the 3600 gets crushed by both the 2700X and the 9900K since there are two fewer cores in this new CPU. Moving on to gaming synthetics, 3D Mark shows us how good of a budget gaming chip that little guy is. In Fire Strike, we see it beat the 2700X and get pretty close to the 9900K. In Time Spy, Port Royale, and even Unigen Heaven, they're all neck and neck, which goes to show that those benchmarks are very GPU bound. There were also other game benchmarks where the 3600 was either always ahead or neck and neck with the old 2700X, but it never really beat the 9900K. So if this information is accurate, this chip at $200 US is pretty much the golden standard for budget builds. The 3600X at 249 is only 200 megahertz faster in base and boost, but you're paying an extra 25%. Plus, if what Travis Kirsch from AMD said holds true, this chip at a 65 watt TDP has a lot of headroom for overclocking. Now, I do have to let you guys know that they tried overclocking on that review, but it seems to just not work. The system was freezing as soon as the multiplier was touched, but this is probably more of a BIOS issue. Anyways, what do you guys think? Perfect gaming chip, or would you still want an eight core for additional headroom? Let me know down below. Oh, and the boxes for those CPUs have also leaked. The Ryzen 9 clearly gets a more premium unboxing experience there, with the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 looking very similar to previous generation boxes. Next up, the Raspberry Pi is getting its fourth generation and that machine is a tiny little beast. The new Raspberry Pi 4B comes in with three times the performance compared to the third gen. It sports two micro HDMI ports that can display up to 4K60, your choice of one, two, or four gigabytes of DDR4, all kinds of wireless goodness, gigabyte ethernet, two USB 3.0 ports, and a switch to USB-C for power. All of that and more for an entry price of 35 bucks and up to $55 for the uh, four gigabyte version. Personally, I've never used a Pi, so I have no clue how much of an upgrade this is compared to the previous generation. So what about those of you who have or work with these things? Let me know what you think. Moving on, it looks like Microsoft is looking into making a foldable surface. This device is just a dual screen surface device with two 4x3 screens. Two 4x3, isn't that a little bit tall for a laptop these days? I mean, sure, 3x2, which Microsoft has been using a lot on their laptops, is not that much wider, but it still seems a little bit odd. Anyways, the Surface device is rumored to have two 9-inch displays, which means it's probably more of a spiritual successor to the Courier device, which once again makes the 4x3 aspect ratio a little bit of an odd choice. Wouldn't a wider or really tall screen be better here if it folds like a book? 4x3 just seems too square. Apparently, it will feature Intel's new Lakefield SoC with 4G or 5G connectivity, and it will support Android apps, which is a nice addition. This device could be released as 
as early as Q1 or Q2 of next year. We've heard about dual screen, form factor, and foldable laptops from Microsoft for years. And now that devices like the Honeycomb Glacier and ZenBook Pro Duo, although they're not the exact same things, have kind of brought the concept to reality, I can see it finally happen for Microsoft. Hopefully though, the Windows Core OS, as they call it, will be up to the task in optimizing a dual screen experience. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, you know where to put them. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Yeah, the desktop isn't that full yet. I still got a few, uh, few dozens more.